Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about retopology using 3D Coat, but as a ZBrush and I'm going to just export a model from here to use as a starting point. So I'm just going to bring up a basic model like this one, and everything looks good. Now, if I'm worried about the amount of geometry here for retopology, there is 100,000 points on this mesh, I can basically duplicate it to keep the original, and in this one, if I go to Z plugin decimation, and I can crunch this down to about 20 or 35,000 polys. Let's go for 35,000. So I'm clicking this button, it's going to change this subtool into a decimated version, which still holds the shape, but gives me less polys. So there's 35,000 points on this mesh. Now I'm going to export this. Okay, now I'm going to go into 3D Coat. This is version 4.8, which I find is the most stable at this point. And I'm going to do perform retopology, and I'm going to import the reference mesh. Okay, the mesh is now here. I can press 4 to see the wireframe. And let's just turn off perspective. And we're in the retopple room. I can begin making polys. Now, I want to press S for symmetry and just put the X symmetry axis on. <coughs> and I'm going to begin using points and faces. The points and faces let you plot down, say, four points. And then as you go in between these points, you can either place a triangle or a quad like this. And then you basically just click. So left click left click and right click, left click, left click, right click. You can also use the tablet. Okay, so I'm just going to make some loops here that make sense. Move some things around. And there you have a nice eye loop. I'm just going to hold down control and click here and now I can drag some of these points in. If I don't want to drag things around one by one, I can actually change my brush to this one. And if I make the brush big enough, I can hold down shift and kind of balance these out. Now it's not moving the edge, so what I want to do is just switch off keep bounds, hold down shift, and you'll see it's moving this whole area around. I can also just move it around like this. <clears throat> if I don't want it to move as much, if I hold down shift and move, shift and left click, and move, uh, shift and right click and move up and down, will change the strength of the smoothing and I can kind of smooth things a little less. Okay, so points and faces, I'm going to add another loop and use the brush and just pull some of those around and just a little bit of smoothing that out. and faces again. Now there's other ways to make quads. You can actually just draw them using strokes. So I can stroke this way, this way, and wherever the strokes interconnect, once I press enter, it's going to look at complete squares and make those points. So I can actually just carry on doing this. and faces and maybe I want more geo here so I'll just hold down control and click and then I can go to my brush and smooth things out let's make that quite a big area 
move things around. Back to points and faces. Now, if you don't like this method, the points and faces, you can actually use quads and whatever edge you go to, if you click, it basically starts that triangle or quad. I click here and then click here, it automatically makes the quad. So whatever edge I go to, it snaps and activates it. Click, 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 click. And then escape to come out of that. Points and faces, I can move individual points around. Or go back to the strokes and carry on making some loops and things. Now the topology might completely depend on the kind of character you're making, how it animates. You can see with a stylized head like this, I've got really interesting topology happening. Uh, you can make any topology that you like. You can see I can also move these points around, but as soon as I press enter, it's going to make those properly. I'll go back to the brush and just smooth that off a bit and move it. You can also increase the Z bias here to see it float above when it doesn't actually float above. If you want it to be pushed further out, you can use this additional extrusion. But I like to keep that at zero and just move the Z bias. You can finish the eye off with a simple cap. And then I'll just use the points here. And then it's move this point. It kind of snaps at the mirror for symmetry. Let's actually make the mouth come here. And I'm just going to use the smooth brush just to fix some of this. Make the brush quite small and I can move it around. So back to points and faces. And maybe I want some different thing happening here, but I'll carry on for now. Okay, so you kind of get the process here. The rest of it's all down to how you want your topology to flow. But once you've done this complete model, you can bring it back into ZBrush and project any of the mesh details onto a subdivision. Uh, you can even UV this. So I'll show you that real quick, what the UVs might look like.
Okay, so let's say that's all I wanted. I can actually go to the UV map. When you're doing retopology, the UVs are a little bit different. It's not in the UV window, but you mark your seams here, however you want them. I'm going to bring up the UV window. So when we float over this geometry, we see a preview of how it's going to look. And we can actually mark new seams if we wanted. Like I could mark some seams here if that made any sense. And it will split that bit apart. Split the ear off. And that will make it its own little island there. Uh, if I wanted to cut the eye out, I can hold down shift and it will cut that eye area. And then when I use unwrap, it basically lays out this area. And I can come in here and rotate these round. Move them. And you see I can change the scale of things as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope that helps you to understand how powerful retopology is inside 3D Coat. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.